Just a minute or two past the top of the hour, and it is really great to be back here uh, in the circle. Thanks to uh, Stephen for the logistical support putting this together. And uh, thanks to Chan, if you're out there, for uh, inviting me back to the Science Circle. Uh, when Chan first offered me this date uh, of November 16th, a couple of months ago, I said, great, we can talk about presidential election results in the United States. I hope this circle will never be unbroken. Uh, so here I am getting another uh, presentation on hope. I do this about once a year, once every other year for the circle and a few other places around Second Life. And given, uh, given the grim mood right now in the United States, this seems like a silly forced uh, topic at best, a pretense that optimism and hope is going to get us through, but let's see uh, what we can do with this. Uh, here is just a quick out, outline of our uh, topic today, a little bit about me, and you can uh, download uh, this PDF file by uh, clicking this, uh, the uh, sign there on my uh, stage right, uh, and also the little I at the bottom of this screen will also give you a link to the slides if you'd like to follow around uh, or also just uh, get a copy of some of the links I'm going to be referring to. This year, this is a poem uh, that has comforted me for more than 50 years now in challenging times since I was a, a teenager writing my own bad poetry. It's by uh, Arthur Hugh Clough. It says, the struggle not availeth, the labor and the wounds are vain, and ends with far back from creeks and the inlets flowing, come silent, flooding in the main. And that's what I want to consider today is the main uh, that is floating in. I'm a sea captain, not close to 1,000 days at sea, but I do know there is nothing that can be done against an incoming tide, the flow of time and ideas raised this up for uh, for generations. Uh, all my life, people have been calling me an optimist. In uh, junior high, I was cast as Happy the Dwarf in Snow White because of my rosy outlook. But you know, I've always thought of myself uh, more as a realist and that reality is simply uh, hopeful. Optimism and pessimism, those words really imply a biased or a filtered perspective, and we color in the truth and dark our bright tones with those words. But here we are better now than we were 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, and certainly 10,000 years ago. Uh, ago. Our, our growth has been towards the good, uh, but we're not there yet. Uh, we may still be very far away, but we are a little bit closer. And as a chaplain, uh, well, going on more than a decade now, I've officiated, I've done a hundred weddings or more, and I try to avoid avert optimism in the ceremonies that everything will just be fine and love will carry you through. But you know, marriage is hard, and it won't uh, always, if ever, be easy. But we can be hopeful that they stick it out and endure through those tough, uh, hard times. And as realists, well, we need to ride the winds and the tides and the currents like any sea captain should know. Time and tides wait for no one. So today, let's look at some of the tides uh, that are coming in, the main that is flowing in, that continues to resolutely and inexorably flood us with hope. See, not the struggle, not of the earth. Well, thank you right there. I've got it. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I do have two notes. We'll start with what I'm feeling hopeful about right now. One of them is that the United States is only 4% uh, of the world's population. Uh, it's our 335 million divided by 8.2 billion 
and other souls in the world. That makes us at 4%. Sometimes I think in the United States, we uh, try to see ourselves as much bigger uh, than we are uh, than we are in the global space of everyone. You know, the rest of the world may well get along with 96% of everybody else, even if we do fall apart here, and I do find some hope in that. Uh, also, hopeful, I believe, as much of the rest of the world uh, is also facing these global winds of left and right across Europe and Asia, Africa, Latin America, the haves and the have-nots, people of good intent, and but not so good. It's a schism running right down the center of much of the world. But also all around the world, we have the very best and brightest of our species in each country and corner as we work uh, to move us ahead beyond the barriers. I know some of them. You know some of them. You are some of them. And uh, that gives me hope. Uh, the study of history, well, it, uh, it, it always depressed me in school, not so much in the discovery in the dark corners of our past, but simply how little we've changed as people. Our species has always been full of self-centered egoists driven to perpetuate their own interests and creeds, as Buster Scruggs says. That's just our nature, and we'd be foolish to expect, uh, expect otherwise. Our nature, our fundamental nature, really hasn't changed all that much over the 10,000 years of civilization. Our, our fears, our hatred, our tribalism, our savagery, our enslavement of others, that's been pretty consistent throughout our tenure. As uh, Albert Einstein pointed out, it may be easier to split the atom than purify the human heart. And uh, as uh, Stuart Brand says, Things do get better in spite of our nature, but that's thanks to science. Uh, science altering the world irreversibly like an incoming tide. We couldn't go back even if we wanted to. Science and technology it gave us the Industrial Revolution. We cured polio. We went into space. We democratized knowledge, uh, science and technology. Is what has fulfilled the aspirations of our better angels so, so well over the years. And we can see that, how some of our most ancient aspirations play out in our current scientific works. The all-knowing Oracle of Delphi is now Oracle Cloud. The all-seeing Acacia record of all that's been done or said or thought is now Facebook. <laughs> We grab energy from the air as wizards and the cornucopia of plenty it is alive in 3D printing. It is science that is bringing about our deepest aspirations. And today we're going to be looking at some of the wonders wrought by science and technology. Many of these that I'll be bringing up are just over the last year or two. Uh, developments in food production and water purification, biodiversity, financial fairness, cancer research, disability, inclusion, peace building is on the rise. Uh, and more uh, advancements here. Advancements in medicine, renewable energy, ocean cleanup, conservation, education, mental health, global distribution of health care. These changes are rolling in like an inexorable, irreversible tide. Uh, I hope we're not sailing down the river sticks without a paddle. We'll consider science and technology as our boat and our efforts as a paddle. How about that sticking with taglines metaphor here? Uh, Tide Magazine uh, recently just ran a story on 13 ways the world has gotten better as we started 2024 and how we're wrapping up on us. Uh, there was a sharp fall in COVID deaths, a 50% uh, drop in violent crime, a hefty drop in oil demand as we turn to more electric and fuel-celled cars and trains and boats and planes. We're going to be looking at some of those. Uh, the article uh, also uh, gives more uh, good news in detail about gene editing for countering disease and 
real climate solutions and ocean conservation, major advances in surgical science. Uh, and again, you can access uh, these hopefully uh, hopeful uh, articles by downloading the PDFs of these slides. They have uh, the links attached if you want to dig further into some of these reports. The Guardian as well uh, has a fresh report on five ways science is making our world better. Uh, new tidal waves of discovery in stem cell transplantations, cancer vaccines, quicker uh, detection of cancer. And there's that James Webb telescope continuing to astound us with some fascinating uh, imagery. Uh, and uh, renewable energy is also uh, stepping up its pace. Again, you can access this article. The link is active in the slides. Let's go ahead. Let's start looking at some specific examples of recent day. Uh, here's one just uh, a couple of weeks ago. I love uh, aviation stories, especially. Uh, here's something coming from NASA. Uh, and the Prius of airliners with hybrid electric engines cutting fuel use, fuel use and emissions by some 80% uh, just a decade from now. We should be taking flights on those. Uh, one of the biggest uh, sticking points for flying cars, we all want a flying car, don't we? Ever since the Jetsons, that's been high on my list. And one of the big uh, obstacles for those has been uh, air traffic control. And we uh, should be close to uh, working that out uh, with designated flight lanes. And the FAA at long last is now allow allowing air taxi test flights in some designated cities. That's all in preparation for widespread service in the very near future. And speaking of things up in the air, as, as we get better at cleaning up our old messes, science and technology again is uh, serving our aspirations for clean and healthy homes and environments. Uh, scientists in the UK have discovered a material that will suck up and store large amounts of those nasty greenhouse gases even faster than trees do, they say. And, uh, here's an article on that in Futurism, if you want a link to that. And tiny habitats, well, they've been in the news a lot uh, recently. I really love the idea of space-efficient space homes. I mean, how much space uh, do we really need at any one time? What are we, we're about a cubic, one cubic meter is what we occupy. Is that pretty close to it? Do we have anybody out there that can do the math on that? I don't think we take up that much space. Most of my space is books and papers. Oh, who needs those anymore? Uh, all my book purchases, yeah, most of my book purchases, I still buy a hardcover now and then if it's a very picturesque kind of book. Uh, this home that we're looking at here is made out of an old wind turbine. They get replaced uh, every decade or two, and they leave this shell behind. Uh, and uh, here with a tiny pro prototype, they've uh, made a nice little cozy home. It's about 400 uh, square feet of living space. My condo I'm living in right now is a much more than that. We also uh, see even more good news coming for renewable energy. A uh, recent popular mechanics article uh, describes a new electrode design that can cleanly extract oxygen and hydrogen from seawater. That technology uh, in itself may well be a game changer, uh, they say in this article. Uh, here's some good news. Well, it's uh, heartbreaking at the same time. All this rubble from uh, bombed out buildings, thousands upon thousands of them. This article estimates some 100,000 buildings reduced to rubble uh, left behind in you know, Ukraine from Russian bombs. I've lived in both those countries. Uh, it can be scooped up. All this rubble can be scooped up by a new machine that converts uh, rubble into building blocks, blocks that uh, interlock and stack without mortar. 
And this is good news for a speedy reconstruction. We're going to be needing a lot of that. Uh, and also uh, more good news, uh, mixed news on uh, uh, your fronts. Here's a gel about to launch that can be squeezed into a bullet wound and stops bleeding within mere seconds. Uh, the FDA has uh, cleared this for uh, its use in moderate to severe uh, bleeding. Uh, that reminds me of the uh, Alpha Gel. If you ever saw the Kingsman movie, you just uh, inject it and the uh, wound is instantly closed. You know, stories like this may make us more angry uh, than inspired that this is the kind of products we need to be developing. And I think getting angry uh, over some of this can be helpful to, I think, a righteous anger uh, that motivates us to get up and do something. Uh, sometimes uh, it's hard to uh, adapt to all of these changes uh, coming at us, and we grow frustrated or angry with the st status quo and the uh, slow pace of change. I'm a red-headed Irish Taurus, and I get angry uh, at times, steam coming out my ears, and I think uh, it is possible uh, to be hopeful and angry at the same time. I think it stimulates a positive action or anger. It sure can. It might be uh, recategorized as righteous indignation rather than right on anger. Uh, here is uh, in this slide some interesting pieces on positive ways to chain, uh, channel our anger uh, for virtuous change. And anger may even have some uh, personal benefits, says the American Psych Psychological Association uh, in the piece linked on this slide. Yeah. Oh, tag around here. So glad to see you here, Tag. Uh, removes the bodies of murdered women, children, and babies from the buildings. You know, what a what a mess this is, and what a heartbreaker this is. I've lived in both Russia and Ukraine. Both people in uh, both both countries have people that I love very much. Just what an awful thing to wake up to every day. I think one of our biggest uh, challenges, well, it's also getting over the sadness uh, that this brings about. And I think uh, we can also be sad and hopeful at the same time. Uh, here is a piece from the Better Health Channel that talks about that. You know, I find that sometimes being sad can be a reality check. It makes me pause and, and, and sadness may make me focus on finding a fix. And, if it can do that for us, well, there's hope and sadness uh, as well. I think the uh, biggest challenge we have to overcome may be our negativity bias. It boils deep uh, in us. It's a simple problem that uh, we're evil scared, and that's it. We are biologically, biologically wired to focus so much more on possible or perceived harm uh, that it's so much easier to simply scare people than to uh, inspire them. But uh, we know we can at least counter it with this proven ratio. It's right there on the slide. Five positive ideas for every negative uh, idea just to balance it out. We don't need equal time. We need extra time. Five times uh, the negative messages. A hopeful message has to report be repeated five times more than fear, and that's just to get us back uh, to zero. Yeah, and, and the choices that we make uh, in fear, you're right about that, uh, Tag. Uh, so where are uh, some even more positive messages that we can focus on, uh, if any? So let's go ahead, let's do a review of some of the hopeful forecasts and fixes that I've taken note of over the last year or so. Uh, we have uh, environmental reporter Bill uh, Weird is on CNN covering how to unscrew a planet. That's what this segment is called. Uh, he has a number of expert guests sharing hopeful results in carbon removal and solar-powered travel and climate intervention. 
just increasing a global awareness of what works in the world. This, this episode will make you feel good, at least better, uh, about our future. My favorite example in this uh, program is uh, this trial exercise of sprinkling artificial whale poo made from volcanic ash and rich in nutrients, and they sprinkled that over a patch of starved desert sea. And then in just four days, there was fresh phytoplankton, and five day, days after that, it was full of fish, this once desert uh, oasis in the sea. And to me, that's an inspiring, we can fix that story. Uh, there is an uh, operative phoenix reminding us, even the ozone layer uh, is recovering. We can fix this stuff with well-intentioned effort and all the good tools that science uh, is supplying us. Go ahead, watch this episode here. It's about 40 minutes long. You can find it uh, through this YouTube link I've shared on this slide. It will be a day brighter for you. We can also stay informed uh, on where trends may be taking us, looking at the big picture, looking at the long haul. And once we have a target goal of what we're heading for, then all we need to do is draw a connecting line to get us there. That's how I would write my stories uh, as, a, as a newspaper reporter. I'd write the first opening lead line, and then I would write... The, the line I wanted to use for closing up the piece, and then all I had to do was connect the, the dots. Uh, it would make it so much easier for me. Uh, here is a link uh, to a report by uh, a Global Trends uh, expert taking us into 2045. It's about 150 pages long, but it is a worthwhile read. Uh, here are some key takeaways. Uh, there is going to be a quickening pace of technologies transforming our lives. We certainly see that coming at us, especially in the areas, areas of health and climate change and productivity. Um, well, we're also going to see uh, increased uh, tensions between existing uh, social fault lines. We need to find ways to get along better. But what those tensions are showing us is the trouble areas, like a zing from a chiropractor when they're poking us. If we if we squawk, well, that shows us this is a this is a point we need to address in our social conflicts. Uh, and also, why we're going to have abundant and cheap energy, which are going to be a huge game changer. We'll be looking more at that today. Also, we're going to be having inexpensive access to universal information, health care, and quality living. We already have quite a bit of that. Uh, but we also, uh, along with that, may face threats of privacy, intrusions, technological failures, and technological divides. We can't forget to keep an eye on that as we move forward, those that may be left behind. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, look at some of this data here. It's been around, uh, but it is a good, uh, let's let some of this data, some of these findings become like a positive mantra that we can use to counter our negativity bias whenever it's getting us down. Uh, look, what, look at what happened uh, to extreme poverty in just 35 years. Uh, yesterday, we still live with one in 10 people living on less than $2 a day, one in five children in the United States going to bed hungry, and that is a horrible thing to pass on to the next generation. Yet, nonetheless, my generation, some of the old timers in the room here, we inherited three in 10 people in extreme poverty not all that long ago, uh, and we've done a good job reducing that. Now the next generation, those of you, the younger ones in the room here, well, now it's your turn to fix the rest of it. And the good news is the trend has been set. What else has changed over 20 years? Well, hunger has decreased by half or more uh, in large country uh, regions around the world. Child labor and hazardous work has decreased by 40%. Global life expectancy has increased by six years over just a 25-year spread. Now we're living twice as long uh, as we did just two centuries ago. 
uh, child deaths, child mortality uh, is down uh, by age five. It has uh, fallen by half over just 30 years. Uh, people around the world are getting taller. We're shooting up in height. Uh, look at that jump since the Industrial Revolution due uh, to better nutrition and living standards. We're shooting up tall. Homicide, uh, homicide rates have fallen around the world as violent crime has as well. Uh, stockpiles of global nuclear weapons are declining around the world. More people around the world are living in democratic countries, even though democracy may be facing uh, a critical phase here. Uh, more people are going to school for longer, especially in developing nations. Uh, more people are getting uh, access uh, to uh, uh, the internet. Online access is rapidly rising all over the world, uh, democratizing knowledge. Uh, alternative energy, renewable energy sources such as wind and solar power are now cheaper than gas or oil per megawatt hour. That is a very good threshold uh, to cross. Uh, cheap energy is so crucial uh, to the next phase we are about to enter. And there are some dark sides uh, to this uh, as well. And uh, why is Europe uh, being lumped together with Central Asia? Well, uh, across Europe as well, if that's what we're talking about. I've lost track of the, uh, of the discussions here, but Europe uh, as well. A number of countries in Europe are also faced with uh, these right uh, left schisms, uh, trying to uh, find their own answers to this. And I, I hope the world benefits from all of us taking this on right now. One of the darkest uh, points we need to keep track of is this evolving uh, useless class of people. I just saw 21% of uh, 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 some positions are already be, being eliminated by artificial intelligence, especially those are uh, just uh, repetitive kinds of, uh, of acts. The uh, Guardian, this article, calls them a useless class of people, people who are, who are not just unemployed, but unemployable. And uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that as AI and automation takes over more uh, and more. <laughs> well, we have to find a use for these people. Uh, don't we? Uh, and you know, if we don't allow people to nurture uh, their powers of creativity and participation, I think they're going to be seeking their power in other ways by simple uh, destruction. And destruction is so easy, like kicking over somebody's sandcastle or or what we have young people who are out in young people in my neighborhood, they toss their empty beer bottles against the pylons of a neighborhood bridge just to hear the resonant crash. And that may give them a sense of uh, power somehow. So what are we going to do with them? Um, uh, all of us useless people, and I uh, include myself in that, educators might well be uh, rendered uh, useless, uh, or certainly a lot of the roles that used to be filled by educators, tutoring and review of learning. So what are we going to do with these people? Well, uh, interestingly, this article uh, suggests that more people might spend increasing amounts of time in virtual reality worlds, uh, which may provide them with the excitement and emotional engagement that they could otherwise be missing uh, in the real world outside. Those of us that have been here for a decade, going on two decades now, uh, we know uh, the richness uh, of participating in these virtual worlds. It can feel just as real and valid and valuable as uh, other settings once we get used to it. I'm uh, casting my eye on the chat as we go along. These are really difficult times for all of us. If we aren't a little uh, angry or put out of place, it just means we haven't been keeping, uh, keeping on top of the news. Uh, here's an exciting article just came out in the New York Times uh, on how we can end worldwide poverty 
with just our efforts to get clean, affordable energy to the some 3 billion people uh, in the world who don't get enough. That's about half of the people in the world aren't getting enough uh, electricity. A big chunk of people aren't getting uh, any at all. Some 700 million people, close to a billion people in the world, don't have energy at all. So we're going to be keeping our eyes on this, the sources for cheap, abundant power. And there uh, is lots of those uh, solar energy, fusion, wind, water power, 5G, wireless electricity that can be beamed around the city. Uh, it is a global game changer, uh, this energy, increasing supplies and availability. Here's some, some good articles. What's happening there just on this one side slide alone? If you download the PDF file, we've even managed uh, like uh, Merlin, like wizards of old, to grab energy right from the air. Scientists at uh, UMass uh, in Am Amherst, uh, they've developed this thin film of protein nanowires that can grab power right out of thin air by sucking up uh, atmospheric humidity. Oh, isn't that magic? Uh, global uh, wind energy uh, should continue in its strong growth. We can see miles and miles of these things uh, driving uh, to Las Vegas through the California desert. You can get a lot of energy out of thin air. Uh, here's more uh, mini homes. I really love these things. Uh, housing is also going to benefit from uh, newer and cleaner technologies uh, such as these cost uh, and energy efficient solar floating homes. Uh, 1,000 square feet, that's a really good uh, living space. They're 12 meters uh, in diameter, uh, 4 meters in height, uh, with a roof topped by solar collectors, if you don't mind my mixed measurements here between feet and meters. Another strange thing we do here in the United States, I think we're one of the few countries uh, still using uh, these little measures of feet and inches and uh, yards. <laughs> but uh, I hope you're following me along. I try to give both uh, measures as we go. Thank you, sis. <laughs> Has mixed feelings about mixed measures. Uh, here are uh, some sample 3D homes uh, printed right on the spot, created right on site uh, using local clay. Uh, with zero waste product. Several homes can be printed simultaneously uh, using multiple crane uh, printers, and they look comfortable enough to me. I would live in one of those. Uh, and uh, we're also going to be able to print organs and skin and faces and uh, customized faces, keeping us forever young. That is uh, in the near, uh, very near future. <laughs> we can even print entire humans uh, one day. Uh, or uh, some more good news on the simple technology front of the life straw continuing uh, to serve as it filters out waterborne diseases such as typhoid and cholera and dysentery and diarrhea uh, that kill as many as uh, 6,000 children each day around the world. And it only costs $3 each for one of these. I have a couple of, a couple of these myself in storage, just in case. Well, here uh, is this clever design uh, that uh, lets a village roll some 100 pounds of water uh, home. Uh, with one boy here, 100 pounds, that's about uh, oh, 20 gallons there. It's about five, five pounds per uh, gallon. It's about two kilos per gallon, if we're keeping up with my switch and measurements here. That is a lot of weight being rolled back to the village very simply with a very smart and clever design. The real, the latest tech, uh, and we've overlooked it for so long, is a simple fix to an ongoing problem. Uh, how are we going to get fresh water uh, across distances? Uh, 
coming up on the end. I wish there was more positive news that I could report right now. Uh, but, you know, looking at even these uh, small steps, even these futile bits of hope, uh, uh, seem pointless uh, given all that we're up against today. But, you know, even these small bits of good uh, lifts the overall goodness of us all. On average, any little bit of good increases the average of all of us, however small it might be. And it's not wasted. These little bits add up. So here is my piece of encouragement to us all. Is let's keep doing our own little bits and knowing that in the great sea world lifting up people around the world. 20 gallons is about 90 liters, 90 kilograms. Yeah. Close to 200 pounds on Earth. There you go. On the moon, it would be considerably less. On Mars, even less still. Uh, and that is what I have to share. My little bits that uh, keep me going. Uh, thank you for the kind uh, comments I've been receiving. Here comes another one. Uh, some, somebody here is so excited about the future. Perfect topping. Uh, for the last week or so, uh, it's getting to the point. What I do now is I try to stay current. We have to, we have to at least know what's going on. Uh, and I uh, turn down the volume and simply play my guitar, <laughs> soothing music uh, while the news uh, hovers in the background and catches my eye once in a while with another little piece of trauma that we need to worry about. And also along with some little pieces of good news here and there. Thank you for letting share uh, letting me share some of my pieces of good news. That was a bit of kindness on your part coming out here today. You've helped make the world a little better a place by your bits of kindness shared. Thank you for that. And here is uh, my contact uh, detail, my research website. This is the kind of news I follow, the kind of research I follow. Uh, again, if you'd like a copy of these slides, please do grab a copy, and the links are all working. I've tested them. Thank you again for coming out. I am going to get on with my day. I'm going to be grading papers. There's another little bit that uh, brings me up in these times, is grading the papers of students in my classes and seeing how they're processing all of this while keeping a sharp eye on the future, what what skills they are uh, building up in themselves, what empowerment they're striving for to go out and do good things in the world. Any teachers in the room, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, thank you, Brooke, for your comment. I do feel better, too, just knowing there's like-minded people out there in the science circle. I always get such a boost of joy, even of optimism, of hopefulness, by attending these uh, meetings here with the Science Circle. Thank you so much for bringing me here today, for coming out. I am going to shut up now, let you get back on with your lives. Uh, and thank you, Tagline, uh, for that observation. It is a hard time to be uh, optimistic and hopeful, but those of us that have any to share, do reach out your hands, spread it around. Hopefulness and optimism are contagious too, just as much as negativity. So spread it around. Thank you so much, and I'll be seeing you in the near future. I got another topic coming up for Science Circle in the not too distant, not too distant future. Coming up, we'll be looking at more of what's happening. Uh, with transgalactic uh, relations. Let's go ahead, get above the muddle of today, the mess of our planet. Let's look at what might be happening on a galactic scale as we reach further and further into the cosmos and maybe make some new connections there. Thank you so much. Thank you for the comments here. And uh, the Phoenix, and thank you, Tagline, so much for answers, for your comments throughout. Thank you, Stephen. And Mike Shaw, so good to see you here. Okay, bye everybody. We'll see you again soon.